so much for everyone who listened to the first episode with Stephanie, who played Hammerhead in the show. Now, my second guest, I'm actually going to let him introduce himself. Well, hello, everyone. My name is McCoy Stewart. I am an actor in New York City, and I play Charlie in Doom Patrol season four. So what was the audition uh, process like? Like, what did you have to do? What was your reaction when you got uh, when you got the call to say that you were able to be a part of the show? What was yeah? What was your reaction to it? That audition process? Yeah. Oh, so um, it was just another email. You know, as an actor, you get a lot of emailed auditions and it was just one more to do. And my actor asked if I wanted to do it or pass on it. And then once uh, I saw the role, I was like, this would be really, really fun to do. So um, I taped for it um, and then sent it in. And then I just continued on with my life. <laughs> and then uh, I remember I was at a performance that I was doing in downtown Orlando and my agent called me and she said that um, they wanted to pin me for the role because they liked my audition and I had to be okay with not going to my college graduation if I got it. And I told her that was so okay. I mean like college graduation or to be on Doom Patrol, you know what I'm saying? Um, and um, I think it was like either the next day or the day after, it's almost gonna be a year now till this happened, but um, isn't that crazy? Um, but um, I remember I had class in the afternoon and I slept in and when I woke up, she was the very first phone call that I had and she told me that I got the part. And it was just, it was the best way to start the day. It really was, it was so exciting. I bet it was, it's just, when you know something is like about to happen, you've got that excitement feel and you're just like, yes, this is actually going to happen. Exactly, exactly. Now it's like confirmed and we're just like, oh my gosh, it's, I'm going to be filming with them. It's, it's the best feeling ever, honestly. So were you a fan of the comics um, and the series before you actually auditioned for the show? So I've never read the comics. I'm not, I'm not the biggest comic book guy. So that's just, I just didn't know it was a comic but I had an prior audition for Doom Patrol for the role of Vic's best friend I believe his name is Derek yeah so um I had auditioned for that part and when I auditioned for when I auditioned for that prior I had watched the show and I was like oh this is a really good show I had to restart it I had to restart it once because I realized that Doom Patrol, tell me if you agree, Doom Patrol isn't like a show that you can really like binge. You have to pay attention. Yeah, you to have to pay attention. Part. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I remember I binged it the first time and like would watch it while I was doing stuff. And then I'd be like, what is going on? Wait, how did we get here? So then I had to rewatch it again and I really, really enjoyed it. It was just such a different superhero type, a uh, different type of superhero show. And I, I watched uh most of season one then and then I guess life just happened and I had another audition and I hadn't heard back from that one and then this audition came up again uh to audition again for the show and I watched a little bit more then and then now and then I, I got it shot it and now we're here uh, to be honest I'm not a fan of the comics um either my brother um is fan of a the comics and stuff but um you I watched them before the show I I watched the um yeah I literally have watched it from since series one two three so I've been watching them all um because um for those of you who are actually just listening in um if you did listen to my uh recent episode um I explained that I'm a, a well basically I know Javan and so I knew when he got announced that he was playing Cyborg, I literally was so excited. So I was really happy. And actually, I'm really glad because this is what the community is all about. It's just, you know, bringing everyone around the world who is a fan of the show and just bringing everyone together. And so, yes, I'm really, I'm really happy about it, actually. Mm -hmm. No, it's such a nice show. And he's so good at Cyborg as well. So, so, so good. They all are. So what was it like filming with um, the cast in the show, particularly your scene with Diane at the petrol station or service station, but yeah. 
Um, it was just very fun. Like it was just extremely fun. Like I, I, we had the best time. We, we just, we showed up to set. We ran the through the lines a couple of times and then we just went at it. <laughs> we just started shooting it. And, um, I remember with her scene, with my scene with Diane, um, it was sunset. Like we shot that, that was the last scene of the day that we shot at the gas station. And it was sunset and it was so beautiful. And we were just all like in such a good mood, just having a great time and just having a lot of laughs and just, just having a good time being a part of like such an amazing thing, you know? Everyone's just so happy to be there. I like, it was genuinely just such a fun time. Like just imagine playing with your friends, all your friends, and then just having a great time. Uh, and also Robbie and Sparrow, uh, my respective co-stars, they were just amazing to hang out with as well. And Diane is super, super nice and super welcoming. Everyone was, it was just such great vibes. Uh, what was your favorite season and episode of the show? I might be biased, but I I'm going to have to say season four, episode five. It's such a beautiful episode. It truly is such a beautiful episode. Like, like Michelle Gomez's monologue at the very, very end, like chef's like beautiful. And um, Diane, Crazy Jane's scene with her younger self at the pool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Mm. That was such a great scene. That was such a great scene, especially between her and Cyborg when they're just smoking at the edge of the pool, uh, just talking about like this massive responsibility that they have, it's, oh my, uh, like to save the world. And it's just, it was really such a good episode. And it was rated a good episode too. So, so I was like, wow. And it's crazy because when you're shooting it, you don't really like, you don't see the other aspects of the show, especially a character like mine. You're only there for your parts. So when I saw it and to see how everything was constructed. And I remember before we shot it, I was able to read the full script because they usually just send you your sides, like just the scenes that you're in. But when I read the script, I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. And then like, what, flash forward six, seven months. And then you actually see it all put together and edited and everything, it's, it was beautiful, it was gorgeous. It was just a really fun experience to my see it on and see it on screen. Yeah, my favorite episode um, is when um, I think it's either is it season two or season three. Basically, mm -hmm. when um, the whole cast are literally together all in one. Uh -huh. So you've got obviously Brenda Fraser, you've got literally Riley, you've got Javan, you've got Matt Boomer, you've got literally the entire cast all together. Uh -huh. And every time I watch that scene, I'm like, oh yeah, that's really them. Like you don't because you don't even realize. And then I was, I absolutely, honestly, that's my, one of my favorite, favorite scenes. Um, and, and yeah, I just love the show. I think what I love mainly about- Crazy the show. show. Yeah, what I mainly, like, really love about the show is how, like, each storyline um, predicts each, each of the characters, like, with Javan and his like and the dad and the storyline between his father and yeah. his mother. And um obviously the story at the moment we've got with Crazy Jane. And it's it's so good because you can easily react to that as well. Um, especially some scenes that are about mental health and mm -hmm. um other scenes are about, you know, wanting to be a superhero and everything. And you know, everyone has that dream. And so for me, that's why I want to bring together Doom Group is because obviously when times were tough and I was feeling a bit low, coming back to watching the show has now got a meaning behind it and it's absolutely amazing. So, yeah. Oh, I totally agree. I hear you. I love that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so, you know, after... Um, what were you going to say? No, you no, go. No, no, you can go. You go. No, I was hearing you talk and uh, about that scene. And uh, you're right. Was it season three or season two? I can't remember. I think it might be season three, but I could be wrong. I think it might be season three. I think you are right. When the whole cast is together, right? Yeah. I, you, that scene 
for some really weird reason. It made me reflect on like this other crazy scene because Doom Patrol is a crazy show where in season one, do you remember when they were in Danny Street and they all had like that big communal orgasm? Yes. That part was crazy. I was just like, I was never expecting that in a show or like a TV show like this. That that was also a really cool episode for me as well. Yeah, I absolutely loved it. Um, especially it is because it's one of the episodes in season four when um it's case is it casey's um i can't remember yeah yeah it's uh to do with um casey and um and you've got dorothy and you've got all of the mm-hmm. daddy street honestly that whole entire episode was amazing like i really enjoyed that one as well it's always amazing when the cast is all together yeah uh-huh. So, I mean, we've got to talk about um, the swimming pool scene because, I mean, what was it like <laughs> filming the pool scene? I mean, I have to admit, Javan doing his um, cannonball, that was impressive. No, it was, and he did it a couple of times. <laughs> um, it, was, it was so fun. It was shooting. I've been able to do a couple of party scenes um, and some of the stuff that I've done, but, like, that one was really cool because... Usually when you shoot a party scene like that, you don't have music because like you don't know what like song you might overlay onto the scene. But while we were shooting that scene, we did. So it was just fun because it really felt like a party. And we had all these extras and um, they had like all this like prop weed and alcohol. And it was like the, the crew, along with the cast of Doom Patrol, like they are just as fun and they they just really added to that party atmosphere. And that was the very first thing that we shot, by the way. We shot the pool scene before we shot the gas station scene. So um, I just remember it was really fun. I just, I also remember there's so much stuff that goes into like a pool scene. Like there were people in scuba suits, like in the, in the, in the pool, like out of frame to like, just make sure everything was okay. And um, I don't know what that was for, but I just remember it being a lot of fun. And that was the very first time we all met each other, like the whole cast. And we just jumped right in. And um, so did Javon in that pool. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, I, th- I he did it a couple of times and he had to dry off in between. And it was just cool. It was just a really, really fun experience. What score would you give him for doing his um, cannonball? Obviously a 10 out of 10, yeah. a 10 out of 10, especially again, that he had to do it a couple of times and every time it was great, a 10 out of 10. He deserves that one. Definitely. Cause when he posted it online and he was like, Oh, what score does everyone give? And I went definitely more than a 10, 10 out of 10. Right. It was, That's like, a 12 out of 10, right? It's like a hundred out of a hundred. <laughs> right. Exactly. Oh, uh, but yeah, that was, it's the best time shooting. Making a TV show, especially a TV show like that, Kathleen, it's just you always have the best time. It's like it's, it's just such a great atmosphere. And the show is made with so much love, too. And like they take the consideration and the expectations of their fans so seriously and they want to do the best job they can. I bet you had some uh, funny moments uh, that you could tell us um, and the audience was filming the scenes that you're in. Um, funny moments. I mean, we were we were all just cracking jokes. We were all just cracking jokes. I mean, what was something that was that was really funny that happened? Oh, Mark Mark Shepard, who plays Willoughby. Yeah, he is such an amazing guy, but he was just always cracking up. I, I cracking us up. I remember there was one scene. I don't know if you remember in the episode where we're shouting at them and and we're shouting at Willoughby because we really want him to take us to this party and we're like virgin 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 (laughs) he goes stop 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 we can't go we can't go there was one take where it was just so good there was one take where we were shouting at him and we were like virgin 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 and he got so frustrated and without saying anything he was just like and we just all stopped like like as if like a music conductor stopping the orchestra and we just all stopped <laughs> and it just it worked so well and it was something that we didn't expect and as soon as cut was called we all started laughing and he was just like <laughs> he said I knew that would work once <laughs> but that's pretty much it I also remember Diane 
but acting acting uh, opposite of her and she would just improv some of her lines and say the craziest funniest stuff and I had to really refrain from laughing because they're all just so funny they really are just such funny people um and yeah that's 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 what I remember I also remember in the pool scene like all like we were all just joking around as if we were like at an actual party and we're like hey pass the liquor over here and it's not real liquor by the way at all but that it was just really really fun and we were all we all really vibed with each other very well I'd like to believe so uh what do you like to do in your spare time apart from acting apart from acting um I really like uh writing I really like making my own uh, stuff that I plan to shoot I also have my roommate Chris who we like exchange back and forth sketch ideas and uh and planning to shoot them one day I also just genuinely love watching television like being an actor in tv and film it makes me respect that art and appreciate it so much than before I uh, had the opportunity to work and I just I love watching television and movies especially like catching up for like the award season the Oscars are coming up watching all those movies and making sure you're like caught up to see um what's gonna happen because it's just exciting um what else do I do and I also dance I also take the time to dance as well I'm a yeah yeah. (laughs) should probably haven't had the time to what you call it go back in the past month but like that is something like prominent that I do in my life I like to take a lot of dance class and be active and yeah I used to be a dancer when I was younger are you for real what type of ball- what type of dance I used to do ballet and tap and yeah so. oh my gosh so you get yeah I, that's just something that I started later in life and just kept on because I just love it so much yeah I I stopped doing it um when I was going to um college and uni and everything because obviously it was taking up most of my time so I had to focus on that but I actually sometimes I still look back on some of my uh dance videos when I was younger and I was like oh yeah I remember doing that but my body is just very nah not anymore (laughs) I know and you're telling me I'm sometimes I'm just like wow I am not 16 anymore that is for sure oh my gosh it's crazy I hear you I definitely hear you Especially that I'm almost 29 now. So it's just a bit like, yeah, not anymore. <laughs> right, right. That's just a little somewhat of a, of a, not so, not so what you call it. We don't have to put our, our bodies in any situation that might risk its range of motion. Um, I mean, we now have to talk about, obviously, the sad news of season five not happening for Doom Patrol. So, what are your feelings about that? Because I'm absolutely gutted. I'm sad that it's coming to an end. I'm so sorry. I'm right there with you, Kathleen. I'm very sad that there's not going to be a season five. I mean, everything, everything has needs to come to an end, obviously. But the fact that this just happened so abruptly, that's what really got me. I was not expecting this, but it's also like so beyond out of our control. You know what I'm saying? I'm just so happy that I can genuinely say that the time that we had making the show um, and just seeing the dynamic between the cast and the crew who have been making the show for years before I even stepped on set, it was genuinely made with so much love and they made the most out of their opportunity to tell this story in the most genuine, authentic way. My community was absolutely devastated. Like, we every time we kept seeing the news about Warner Brothers and you know HBO and all that, and I was just going, it may happen, it may not. Uh-huh. And then I had that gut feeling that something was gonna happen. I kind of knew something was. And then when we heard the news, my messages from the community just literally went so crazy. Um, and they were all saying, Oh, I can't believe this is happening, and why is this happening? I'm just going, I don't know. Um, I honestly was so I couldn't even look at my phone on that day I was so sad and I just thought right now that's come to an end let's really focus on the podcast patrol and the doing group and build it up and just keep that community going because we want to keep that happiness and so um, yeah so even though doing patrol is coming to an end we still got doing group 
Exactly. And also, just to be optimistic, we never know what might happen in the future. Never know. Never know what might happen in the future, especially in this age of reboots and things being picked back up after years and whatnot. You, we never know. We never know. Never know. So, if you could create your own villain for the show, what would it be? My own villain? Yeah. Uh, okay. My own villain for the show. Can I ask what yours would be? Ooh. I mean, this, I mean, you can literally just take people from, you know, Marvel and DC and kind of bring it together so you can have so like i can choose a pre-existing villain um you or make my or make, make up your own one make up your own one yeah oh okay so okay if i had to choose a villain i i would think they would i'm just trying to think of someone that the doom patrol would be able to take down or wouldn't be able to take down This is going to be extremely basic, and I'm sorry, but I would genuinely love to see the Doom Patrol against Thanos. Oh, okay, yeah. Isn't that interesting? I would love to see how that would play out. I mean, my one from the top of my head would be, I'm, I'm talking about basic as well, so maybe mm -hmm. something like there's like an evil, I don't know, evil cyborg or evil crazy Jane um, and they literally, for some reason, they travel back in time. And like a different alternate them. dimension, like a different yeah. version of them. That's sick. So that That's would be sick. That would be so funny, though. But also, we would be like, oh yeah, because um, on the very first episode on season four, when there was a future Javan, mm -hmm. and I saw him literally um, his entries, and I saw him walking across, and I thought that's got to be him like that's got to be a future version of him and then when he appeared and I'm like yep so uh, it was really uh -huh. um it was really cool actually that episode especially seeing two Durans because you're like why which one's which <laughs> <laughs> so well speaking of characters if you uh -huh. could have any superpower what would it mean just one Okay, um, so maybe at least, okay, we've got to have think about maybe two this time because Steph when we had Stephanie, she actually gave um, quite a good answer. So you've got to um, think of a good one as well. If I had a superpower, you said I have two, right? You can have two, yeah. All right. One of them would be to be able to speak, write, and read in every language of the world. Okay, that definitely is quite interesting. And then also doing, on top of having that ability to be able, I'm stuck between two now, to be able telekinesis i'm just gonna i i really do it's 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 so cool it's so cool i feel like to be able to move objects without without having to actually touch them like 11 on stranger things i think that'd be really cool yeah i've got like a um i call it my special gift um part of being autistic is that we've got a very good um, memory and mm -hmm. so i can hold quite a lot of information so um which is good and um but my actual superpower i think if i if i actually had one it right. would be teleportation so i can literally clip my fingers and i would end up being somewhere else because i uh, mean uh -huh. i mean the amount of um prices you see for flights and everything it's oh it's so expensive for flights for ubers it's so funny you said that kathleen because i was choosing between teleportation or telekinesis and i said i'll choose telekinesis but i like the way you think you're so right to just go anywhere at any given time and just be there instantly that'd be a dream yes yeah, so i thought teleportation or possibly i would love to do super speed because super like, speed. because if you wake up late and you need let's say you wake up late and you need to be at work within like 10 minutes you can just literally super speed and you're like oh i'm here 
It's all right, but you also know what? You could also teleport. You could also teleport. Yep. That'd be crazy. If you had super speed and teleportation, you would definitely end up in like different alternate dimensions <laughs> at that point. So can you tell us about your experience working on Doom Patrol and um, yeah, just explain, you know, uh, just explain about, you know, what it, what was it actually like, you know, working with the crew, working with the cast, because we have to give credit to the, the um, crew because, you know, everyone loves watch, obviously watching people on the show, but they um, sometimes they don't know the people behind it. So yeah, so what was it like, you know, working with the crew? Working with the crew was just as fun as working with the cast. They are literally just as important as the actors on screen. And we literally, obviously, objectively couldn't do it without them. But not only are they all great at their jobs, they're also just such a fun time to hang out with, like, like to work alongside the cast and crew. And remember, some of them have been there like from the very beginning, 2019. And the love and connection that they have toward that show it was just amazing to be a part of that extremely warm environment and and yeah I feel like I've been a part of I've been a part of a few projects that were relatively new so everyone was just sort of to get to know each other but to join a tv show that had already been running for what three years three four years it was just a different feeling. It was a little bit intimidating, I will say, but everyone there was so welcoming and nice. And there was just such like, just such a, what's the word I'm trying to say? They had such a well-rooted dynamic between how they all work amongst each other, where it was just like, it, it seemed from someone on the outside coming in, just like this world oiled machine of just, of <laughs> just shooting these crazy crazy scenes and just like this is just another day for them like this is their day of work and it's so fun that this is what they get to do like this is literally their job making doom patrol a show just as, a show as crazy as doom patrol can you talk about any particular challenges you face while filming um your scene and how you overcome them any particular challenges I don't think there are any significant challenges that I remember. Significant. <laughs> there's this one, there's this one funny thing that happened while we were shooting. So while we were at the at the gas station, right? We're filming at the gas station, and in the background, a police officer um pulls someone over in the shot. Like they came into the shop because we were just, we were shooting at a random gas station and there was a police officer who pulled someone over in the shop, like sirens and all while we're trying to act. <laughs> and you just hear, Woo, woo, woo. and they like park right in the backdrop and, and right in the background. And the, the we had to cut and the crew had to go to them and be like, um, we're actually shooting a TV show. If you could just pull them over just a little bit more to the side, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. So it was like, it was a challenge, but it was, it's also just a, a very funny happenstance. You know what I'm saying? Are you good at remembering your lines? Yeah, I would say I'm good at remembering my lines. Yeah, because yeah. um, I've got, so uh, with my autism, I can literally, I would read, because uh, when I was back at college and I was doing performing arts, and I'd read um, a script, and I'd read it for like, read my line for like over like 10 times, and then literally I'd, I would just know it off my heart and it's crazy and my teacher would just look at me going how on earth do you remember that and I went I just know it's just it's just there I would def definitely agree it's the same thing for me I can just read it a couple of times understand the context of the scene and usually it sticks and if it doesn't you read it one more time and more sticks and more sticks until you have it all so what do you mean actress oh <laughs> I could do actually yeah I mean I mean, interviewing is what I love. I love I doing love it and um, I've got a passion for it. So I love anything to do behind the scenes and in front at the same time. Mm -hmm. I hear you. So how does, um, yeah, 
So, oh, sorry, so I'm just reading because some of these questions are from the Doom groups. So I want to make sure I get the right, you know, the right questions and the right. Answers. They gave you some of their questions. They did. They oh, I love that. I love that. Most of them that you I've actually asked you are from them as well. So um, we all came together. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So, um, oh, here we go. This is a good one. Um, what do you have in the works for the future and what kind of roles are you interested in exploring next? Well, I can't really talk about what's going to happen in the future as of right now. But what I can say is you can definitely expect me on your television in the future soon. Oh, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. <laughs> You have to, that you have to. <laughs> so if you were in Doom Patrol team, what uh, what would your superpower and hero name be? If I was a part of the, the Doom Patrol team? Yeah. So then I feel like if I'm a part of the Doom Patrol team, I have to pick a superpower that I don't really want. You get what I'm saying? Yep. All righty, so... Um, if I was a part of the Doom Patrol team, the superpower that I would have would be... This just came off the top of my head, all right? But it's the opposite of what I would want. I'd have like toxic breath, toxic bad breath that could just like knock people out, like, like just knock them out unconscious. You know what I'm saying? But like, that's the thing that happened to me. And I'm just like, I... But it, but it, it's not something that I like, but it's something that could be helpful in some of these situations that the Doom Patrol find themselves in. You know what I'm saying? That's the very first thing that came to my mind. I don't know if that's nasty, but yeah. Oh, and my 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 name would probably be Knockout Breath. Knockout Breath. <laughs> right. That's actually quite good. I mean, this um that actually that question was for me because then um, when I was thinking about the type of questions I actually thought oh what could be um, an interesting one so I'm actually quite glad that that was a good answer so oh, nice that was a good question too good because, question. because you can't choose just like any like like standard nice superpower that you would ideally want to have so what do you think sets Doom Patrol apart from other superhero shows on television um, and why do you think it has such a dedicated following I think I think that goes into uh, the question that you just asked me in regards to um, my favorite superpower. It's a superpower that I don't really want to have. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like Doom Patrol is just, it's a show about this group of underdogs, really, who are just stuck with these things that have happened to them that have made them outcasts in the world. Um, because of these accidents that they could not have anticipated in their life. And it's them joining together and making the most out of their life still, even with their new abilities, you know what I'm saying, that they may not want to have. But And I feel like a lot of people can relate to that in regards to, in regards to, you know, feeling like an outcast in some sort of way, but also making some sort of like, significance or, or making your life of importance you know what I'm saying at the same time yeah I think I I mean like I said before like what Doom Patrol and the actual show means is um it just it kind of warms my heart and I absolutely love it and what I love about the community is we're literally from everywhere like literally everywhere around the world like we've got people from Spain to Brazil to Mexico to UK USA it's and it's amazing and it's crazy and I've had so far some amazing experiences and I am literally completely grateful and this podcast um if it if this go, does go really really well we're hopefully going to do a season two as well so um so far I'm absolutely oh, oh my gosh I'm wishing you the best oh my gosh it's gonna happen it's you gonna just happen season two is going to happen so i 
think that is pretty much all oh, apart from one more question because this was actually from the community group and they would like to know how does playing a small but impactful uh, role like Charlie compared to your other acting experiences? Hmm, nice question. I, um, I'm still at the very beginning of my career. So I, I have, I've been work, I've been, I've had the blessing to work professionally, um, since 2021. So I'm still very new at this in regards to TV and film and my presence in that industry. But this role was a bit different because I just got to do a tiny bit more. I'm not going to hold you. I, my very first role that I had was, you know, uh, it was the type of character that, you know, has the high, buy, leave, you know what I'm saying? It's just in the room. And then, you know, with the jobs that I've had after that, I've just been able to do just a tiny bit more and then a tiny bit more. And then, you know, you get more lines and you get more things to do and you're in more scenes. So Charlie has definitely been um, a role where I've done the most on TV so far most on television in regards to in regards to my character's presence in that episode so that was really really fun because because it's also just a blessing to learn I, like I, I love that I'm able to just like do a tiny bit more every single time because I feel more prepared you know what I'm saying I stepped into that role and that job just knowing that I could do it and it was going to be fun and I'm doing some stuff that I haven't necessarily done before but it's going to be okay and it, again most importantly it's going to be fun and it's going to be fulfilling honestly fulfilling most importantly so so that's how that's differed that's the most like lines that I've had so far and and um in regards to my character's um significance toward that episode's plot line because I have to bring them to the party and they have to give us beer even though we're underage but um but um yeah it was just really really fun it was really fun to just get to to do a tiny bit more I mean we have to um give credit to the costume team I mean yeah. I mean the episode that you were in those costumes were literally brilliant oh, I mean, when I saw um, Javan wearing braces, honestly, I just giggled. It was so funny. I but know. I at the same time. I know. Oh my gosh, they no, they did an amazing job. That was one of the most fun fittings I've ever had. And we tried on a lot of outfits, but once we wore that one, it was just like it was a collective yes in the room. It was just like, yep, this is the one. And then. It was just the costume. And then my very first day of filming, Kathleen, that's when they added the, the hair and the makeup and everything got came together. It was amazing. How long were you in um, hair makeup for? Two hours. Well. <laughs> yeah. Two hours. I, I would time it. It was two hours every single time. It would it'd be two hours to get ready in general. Like, like. Okay, I'd say like two hours and 30 minutes if you include the costume. But yeah, that's how long it would take. It was so fun though. Like it really, like it is a long time, but it's so fun. It's so fun getting ready in that sense. And then you're slowly getting into character. It's so nice. Did you have any input on uh, what type of co costume you wanted to wear as your character? Or did you um, kind of just let the um, costume designers just go, yep, here you go. <laughs> No, it was, a, it was, um, I was extremely lucky to, the costume team is, the costume designing team is like so chill and so cool and so fun. And I was able to have some input. I think I, I picked out that shirt and I think I like, I wore the score, I wore the skirt with a different outfit, but um, they liked it with the top that I had chosen. And I think I also chose the shoes as well. No, I definitely, it was definitely a collaboration, which I love. I've been really, really lucky to work with some really cool costume designers who are open to collaboration. Because I feel like they also know it too. They also like, they they see, like I come in and I'm so open-minded. I, I come in and I, I'm i so prepared for them to just be like, this is what you're wearing. But if they ask, like they're, they, they will literally tell you, be like, what are you like, what are you gravitating toward? You know what I'm saying? And, I, and I'm honest. Because, you know, I just want to look my best and do the best job that I can and make Doom Patrol look good. So it was definitely a collaboration. And I mean, look at the look. It, 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 would, it was it's definitely. 
it was it's funny. So good. It was um oh, each of the costumes related to each of the characters, and that's what I love. And it was oh it was so good. Oh, so good that it was. Well, we have to obviously end the interview, um, but it's been so wonderful talking to you and thank you so much for being a part um, of this. And just before I end, I do have to say, unfortunately, Yobi couldn't be with us. Um, he had to, um, he, he has other things going on, uh, but he will be with us for the next interview. But, yeah, I'm so sorry he couldn't be with us today, but you did have the wonderful me. So. <laughs> okay, I had you, Kathleen, and I understand that he most definitely would have wanted to be here, but everyone has a hectic schedule. And I want to say, I want to take the time to say thank you so much for asking me to be on here. It really means a lot. Well, you're more than welcome to come back and um, discuss oh, more about Like we said, we never know what happens in the future. You so um, can everyone follow you on social media? Because I'll put leave the links obviously down below in it. Of course, yeah, you can definitely follow me on Instagram at McCoy Stewart, just my first and last name. Perfect. Um, and you all can also follow a Doom group as well. And I'll put all the links down below. Um, but and the wonderful yeah. Kathleen. And the wonderful me, of course. <laughs> and you be as well. We'll put, make sure we put his links down below as well. But thank you so much uh, for um, tuning into this podcast interview and um, check out the next one. So thanks for watching. Okay. Thank you guys.